got to stay on the street. Uh, and we've got to get more active. We've got to get more confrontational. We've got to make sure that they, th they know that we need business. It's harder to imagine anything more inappropriate than a member of Congress flying in from California to inform local leaders, not so subtly, that this defendant had better be found guilty or else there will be big trouble in the streets. It's beyond the pale for a sitting member of the United States Congress to look at what happened last summer and imply there should be some kind of a sequel. Well, the headlines were basically about Maxine Waters Saturday in Minnesota. Uh, familiar Republicans pounce on her comments. However, it wasn't just Republican critics. Here's the judge in the Chauvin case today. I'll give you that Congresswoman and Waters may have given you something on appeal that may result in this whole trial being overturned. I wish elected officials would stop talking about this case, especially in a manner that is disrespectful to the rule of law and to the judicial branch in our function. I think if they want to give their opinions, they should do so in a respectful and in a manner that is consistent with their oath to the Constitution to respect a co-equal branch of government. Again, the judge in the Derek Chauvin case, uh, the jury now has that case. Let's bring in our panel, Bill McGurn, columnist for The Wall Street Journal, Mar Lyason, national political correspondent of National Public Radio, and Steve Hayes, editor of The Dispatch. Steve, your thoughts on all this? Well, I think what Maxine Waters said was deeply irresponsible, and I agree with the, the, the judge's rebuke. I mean, I, I think our national leaders in, in all areas of life, whether elected officials, whether Republican and Democrat, whether parts of, of the judicial branch, people with a platform should be doing everything they can to urge folks to follow, uh, to, to, to respect the, the process here uh, that, that's playing out in, in Minneapolis, and to do everything they can to calm these passions that we've seen. Uh, for Maxine Waters to step into the fray and suggest that uh, the protesters increase their confrontation, particularly after what we saw uh, on the streets, whether in Kenosha or elsewhere around the country last uh, last summer, is deeply irresponsible. You know, Mara, Speaker Pelosi said today uh, she shouldn't have to apologize. She shouldn't right. apologize. Uh, but that was before the judge said you may yeah. have just handed the defense yeah. something on appeal. Yeah, I mean, look, it depends on what happens with the jury verdict and also what kind of reaction there is. But um, there's no doubt the one layer of it was this political layer where both sides like to focus on the most extreme member of the opposition party. But to have a judge say that you might have just handed the defendant that you want to see declare guilty a big uh, weapon to maybe overturn a verdict might be a cell phone. That was a whole other layer of this. Yeah. Uh, Bill, I want to turn to foreign policy now. One of the things we talked about with Senator Cotton was Taiwan and China, but I didn't touch on Russia and what's happening there. Not only are they building up their military along the border with Ukraine, but also you have Alexei Navalny, who may die. Take a listen. We have continued to see uh, an increase uh, in, the, in the forces uh, along the border with Ukraine and in occupied Crimea, as it ha was before very seriously concerning to us. Um, and uh, we, we call on Russia to obviously make their intentions uh, more clear. What happens to Mr. Navalny in the custody of the Russian government is the responsibility of the Russian government and that they will be held accountable by the international community. Bill, what about this? Navalny, obviously a, a, a critic of Putin and has been on a hunger strike. Right. Well, he's not the first critic of Putin to find his life in peril later on. Uh, look, we should hold him responsible uh, if, if Mr. Navalny dies. But the problem is we're, we're issuing these statements and stuff we will not tolerate. We will hold accountable. What will we actually do? Um, that is a challenge. I mean, President Biden is being challenged on many, many fronts. All these bad actors look at how he's responding to other challenges. And I think he needs to find at least one and make a strong show or else I think his presidency is going to, he's just going to be hammered by these very bad actors. But Steve, the last administration he was a part of uh, didn't do so well with red lines. 
No, and particularly uh, with respect to, to Russia and Crimea. Look, I think, you know, the Biden administration can say, look, he threw a, a brushback pitch, to use a baseball analogy, with the strikes earlier on the on the, the militias, um, and there there was a big statement. But I think Bill is right. You know, you're having these, these this strong rhetoric from the Biden administration, but it's sometimes compromised by uh, mixed rhetoric. Uh, you know, you had President Biden, you had the administration issuing sanctions last week. You had tough talk on, on Vladimir Putin. You had President Biden earlier calling him a killer. And then you have uh, a statement from the White House suggesting that President Biden and President Putin will meet for a summit in the coming months. Well, you don't meet for a summit with somebody who's behaving the way that Vladimir Putin is, is, is behaving these days. And giving him that kind of uh, stature lift inside Russia, so much of what Vladimir Putin today is doing is he's doing because he's trying to shore up his position inside of Russia for domestic political concerns, domestic support, giving him that kind of a stature boost uh, at precisely this time that he's struggling, I think it was a real mistake. Mar, isn't it the same thing with Iran? I mean, we are desperately, it seems, trying to sit down to negotiations to restart this nuclear deal as the Iranians are saying, you know what, we are going to enrich uranium yeah. to 60 percent. Yeah, look, I think each of these foreign problems is different. Iran, Russia, China has been more aggressive about Taiwan, but all of them are pressuring the Biden administration to do something that proves it's credible. I mean, to say there are going to be consequences, you don't have to broadcast them in advance, but if they uh, if Navalny dies, if Russia continues to have military incursions into Ukraine, then he has to absolutely do something. Obviously, we have a lot of things to focus on in the U.S., but these are three big issues overseas that we're following very closely.